Hello everyone, this is Dr. Clark in the Center for Weight Loss Success and I want to do a quick little video on carbohydrate sensitivity. We talked last time about kind of what is your blood sugar and what does it actually mean and how small amount of uh, carbohydrate actually takes to raise your blood sugar. You know, literally it only takes about five grams and you can double your blood sugar. <clears throat> So, and that's only a tiny amount, literally about, what, a quarter of a slice of bread, half an Oreo. So tiny amounts can actually affect blood sugar tremendously, especially if you're sensitive to carbohydrates. So carbohydrate sensitivity, kind of what is it? Okay, what does it mean when I say that? I talk about it all the time. What it means is that uh, when you have a little bit of carbohydrate, it does affect big blood sugar swings. And it's a continuum of normal, though. Okay, if a carbohydrate sensitivity is a continuum up to diabetes mellitus, the diabetes type two, so it kind of goes carbohydrate sensitivity, insulin resistance, then diabetes mellitus, and it's a continuum there. There, you know, we kind of, as physicians, we sometimes say, well, there's a line in the sand, and when you cross it, now we label you that. But reality is that's not true. It's kind of shades of gray going up there all the way, and literally at any level, it could affect you more than it would affect someone else. So, it, it, you know, we talk about hemoglobin A1Cs, which I probably ought to talk about that one day too. What does that mean? But um, it isn't necessarily, here's a line in the sand, now you're this. Okay, I mean, that really makes no sense. Um, so it's kind of a continuum there, and the reality is, is kind of the more you are, the worse it can be. So, carbohydrate sensitivity, what is it? Basically, it what it means is that when you have a carbohydrate, whatever kind, you get a much bigger blood sugar swing, and the reason occurs. Well, let me back up first and just say what should happen when you have a carbohydrate. So, say you eat a little bit of carbohydrate, what should happen is blood sugar should go up a little bit and followed by insulin going up a little bit, kind of follows it up there so there's not a big swing, and it brings your blood sugar back down. That's what should happen. Okay? Carbohydrate sensitivity is there tends to be a delay. And so you have some carbohydrate. There's You have a carbohydrate. It's absorbing it. Blood sugar is going up. But insulin does nothing. When insulin does nothing, it allows then the blood sugar to spike way up. So there's a delay in the normal insulin response. So if there's a delay in the normal insulin response, you get this big spike in the blood sugar. Now there's an overdrive insulin response. So you get this huge insulin response. So you get this big shift in then insulin, and then the blood sugar plummets. So you tend to get big swings in blood sugar. And the problem there is the blood sugar swings cause problems. Okay, one, it tends to cause symptoms, but it also tends to cause weight gain. I mentioned this is kind of a continuum all the way up insulin resistance and diabetes mellitus too. So, you know, who does this actually affect? Well, reality is that two thirds of the population is carbohydrate sensitive. Plus, if you're 70 pounds or more overweight, very like there's 90% of the population then, okay, is carbohydrate sensitive. Reality is of my surgical patients, it's probably close to 100% because most of them are actually insulin resistant. They've already made it up the step. They're more than carbohydrate sensitive. They're insulin resistant. Some obviously are diabetics. Okay, there's just a continuum there. So it affects a tremendous amount of people. And it doesn't necessarily have to affect your weight. It may just give you symptoms. It certainly can affect weight. It affects a lot of people's weight, but it tends to give you symptoms. The symptoms of carbohydrate sensitivity are really the symptoms of blood sugar swings. Headaches, tiredness, irritability, I feel shaky, I have to lay down, I feel like I'm going to faint, I've got to eat something right this second. And the symptoms that come not with blood sugars going up, the symptoms come when blood sugars fall. And the symptoms occur not due to the number. It's not the number that causes symptoms. Say, oh, I have low blood pressure, low blood sugar. You could, but very likely you don't. You probably have normal blood sugar. The symptoms come from how fast is it coming down. It's the speed of the fall. The speed of the fall causes symptoms, not the actual number itself. Well, the speed of the fall always mirrors the speed of the rise. So the treatment is don't get the rise. If you don't get the rise, you don't get the fall. Starving people actually keep their blood sugars rock stable. They're perfect. It's only when we eat that things get thrown out of whack. And typically the carbohydrate that we eat that throws them out of whack. So the way the solution then kind of is, is that, okay, keep that carbohydrate down. So if you don't get the rise, you don't get the fall. 
and starving people keep their blood sugars rock stable. Now the second part of that was that blood sugar swings not only cause symptoms, but they tend to cause weight gain. Weight gain comes from every time you get a blood sugar swing up. If you get a great big insulin swing up, insulin's the hormone that turns on fat storage. And it's a message your body can't control. Okay. Basically, you're, you have to respond to that. If your body's telling, or if your insulin level is telling you to turn on fat storage, your body's going to try to store fat. That concept has nothing to do with calories. I'm going to say that again. That concept has nothing to do with calories. You could be eating low calorie, but if what you're eating keeps you in big blood sugar swings, carbohydrate, subsequently then you're going to be turning on fat storage. And we find many of our patients actually kind of even in a fasting levels, high insulin levels. They're already starting out with high insulin levels. So their body is already primed to store fat. And they do. Again, that concept has almost nothing to do with calories. That's a little bit oversimplification, but it's very real. Okay. So what do you do about it then? All right. So the solution is, again, okay, don't get the rise. If you don't get the rise, you don't get the fall. Okay. So that means not starving. That will work, but it's probably not a good plan. Okay. But it is going to be keeping that carbohydrate ratcheted way down. You keep that carbohydrate ratcheted way down, you don't get the rise. If you don't get the rise, you don't get the fall. The other thing that tends to help is exercise. And I say exercise, it's not just going out for a walk. That can be helpful, but it's really more intense exercise, specifically weight training, but also then high intensity interval training. And we'll probably talk about those things down the road too. So keeping the carbohydrate ratcheted down, exercise does help. Questions, comments, post them below. Give us a yell here at the Center for Weight Loss Success. We're here to help. And thanks for sharing. Have a good day, everyone. Take care.